Sorry, Tracy, I still not able to sign for December and January minutes. I'm really hoping to make it in person to the next one. Um, looking over uh, February 26th, I see no needed corrections. Um, however, does anyone else see needed corrections from last minutes meeting? Last month's, cool oh, spelling day, last month's minutes. Great, great. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Rihanna. Um, hey, Cynthia. Yeah. Yeah, just, just wanted to mention this real quick. If you have time in between meetings to just pop in during the day or whenever is convenient to sign that, the meeting minutes, even before the next meeting, it, it'll kind of get the city clerk feeling a little bit better if we get those signed. Yeah, I can definitely do okay. that. Um, actually, you know what? Tracy, would it work if I did that? Tomorrow for you? Yeah, tomorrow morning would, would be fine. Okay. Let me just see quickly on my calendar. I'm working from home tomorrow and I could stop in between 10 and 12 if that, okay. if that works. Yeah. Perfect. That'll help a lot. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. Definitely do that. Um, hey, do we have a motion to approve the minutes from February 26th? Motion. I don't Perfect. And do we have a second? Second. Great. Thanks. Um, all in favor? Okay, this moment minutes pass as written. Um I will just make sure since I'm on Zoom, are there any members of the public uh, in the meeting today? No. Okay. Then we'll move on to new business. Um Monthly icebreaker. Did anyone volunteer for this last time? Mm. I thought it was. I thought it was you, Cynthia. Oh, thanks, Katie. No, <laughs> sorry. No, no, no. no. I but I no, if, it, if anybody, if you are prepared, just whoever <laughs> can think of one. No, no, no. I got one. I just couldn't remember. Okay. <laughs> I think that's correct. <laughs> Perfect. That's <laughs> like, um. So, if you had to describe yourself today as you're feeling right now in terms of a potato, how would you feel? So, I will go first. Right now, I feel like a mashed potato. I feel very like Partially because I really wish that same grade and BDSD spring breaks the line. Right. Oh, yes. Yes, oh. yes they, don't. they don't. Even no. even their three day weekends for mm -hmm. in service days, one does Mondays, one does Fridays. Yes, they're yeah. completely out of sync. It's as new as you And Boulder Valley. 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 Oh. And so the colleges feel like to you and Boulder Valley at the same one. <laughs> <laughs> So I feel like a mashed potato today. <laughs> um, anyone else want to share? Um, I'll go next. I feel like a scalloped potato because I've been traveling a lot. So I feel like I'm just like one slice, just talking to people here, and then I'll be on another call. Pretty too clever for me. <laughs> I just feel like a potatoes are like different pieces of meal are all over the place. So scalloped potato. Nice. This is a. You guys are this way is really too a clever. Good this is way too clever. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh gosh. Catherine, you want to? Oh, you are? Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, here, I'll turn on for a second here. Sorry. It's okay. Um, I told the group that I got behind on making my family dinner. So mm. <laughs> I'm making pizza videos. I'm multitasking. Um, so I, I feel like a fried potato. Because <laughs> yeah. my spring break is not till the end of the week, yes, and so it's like the last death march mm. to <laughs> the break. So, well, crispy, but we'll make it. Uh -huh. <gasps> um, I'll go with seed potato, just oh. because it's gardening time, and mm. yes, I feel frazzled and hectic right now with, I work from home, and my nine-year-old thinks she should be at home this week and oh. it's hard to binge everything and then this is the time of year to start my biggest hobby and that just doesn't seem like a good time of year for that <laughs> well i um 
I'll base my answer off just today, really, uh, that I feel like a sweet potato mm -hmm. because um, over the weekend I received an email from a patron and about uh, some books on a display and I thought her email, while I disagreed, was very logical and reasonable and we had a good email interaction and it's it's a case of having a dialogue where you can still not agree and I felt like, you know, I was sweet, I guess, and so was she in that sense. So I felt pretty good about that even though, you know, we're not gonna be in agreement necessarily. It was a, like, a decent conversation. Mm -hmm. It doesn't always happen these days. Mm -hmm. I'd say a baked potato. <laughs> no, just not, no, not that way. Not that way. <laughs> no, no, no. You know what people are saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's um, so we had a meeting, you know, earlier with um, our city manager and city attorney around. I guess there's a group that um, for a ceasefire, and they're going from municipality to municipality. Yeah. Um, last week we had MLC, and I was talking to um, some folks from Boulder and Fort Collins. Apparently, you know, protesters have glued their hands to a wall. Mm. So I don't like. I don't know. Maybe a fried potato. <laughs> wow. It's that. That's yeah. For tomorrow. <laughs> Tracy. Thinking about it. Uh, <laughs> I'm thinking parboiled. Because I feel just <laughs> like like soft. Yeah, like I, I have like, there's some really good things going on in my personal life, but just also having that like feeling with other things in mm -hmm. her. Um That's and good. Kind of yeah. so that's a good one. Yeah. Well, that was Great. fun, Cynthia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that was the last minute you took my question, I just went prepared. And I just wish that I've been making potatoes. Yeah, like, yeah okay. that seemed very prepared. Yeah. That's yeah. really that's really clever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys want to volunteer for next month? Uh, Catherine said I have Anne. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> it's okay. Sorry, Catherine. I have a tease you. She corrected herself. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Um, so we have a couple of new business agenda items. Really, this next one I think it will take up the, the most time. The other two are pretty quick. Um, but let's go ahead and dive into it. And uh, this is a is a catch up. Uh, so, the board will be presenting on with, uh, with John, the library director, the annual report to council. Thank you, Susie, mm -hmm. um, for helping to facilitate that. And uh, the date, it, in my understanding right now, is TBD. But I thought, uh, especially since John had chance the final um, report, it'd be nice to, to to go over again, maybe hear from John um, some of the changes, any comments or questions from the board, and then if there's anything that we want to make sure and really draw to council's attention during this presentation, um, I think this would be a nice place to discuss that. Uh, so John, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll hand it to you to start. If you just want to maybe share some of the updates um, that you've done and, and anything that you think is really uh, pertinent that we want to make sure and highlight in, in our presentation. Yeah, so let me bring up the um, the current uh, those of you online can see my screen okay thank you so um, since the last time I had to move you all this is hang on a second okay. um, I, 
I may have talked a little bit for this last time, but in between the two meetings, I have done a little bit of editing on some of the explanations and um, data points of the report. I think I put this in a packet too, did I? So hopefully, even either if you didn't see it, you'll have a chance to or whatever. But um, I'll just walk through a little bit uh, of how we structured this. So it's kind of in sections. Community engagement and library use is really referring to patron interactions um, that we have. So the numbers you see here, it gives you a little explanation of what that means. Um, so when you see this, it's, it's all defined um, and it's split out between basically our four departments. So these are reference questions or directional assistance or some combination, um, basically interactions. So when we have a total number here, 123,000 means basically the, the sum, more or less, okay, <laughs> of, of a lot of the numbers in here as far as how we interact with patrons. Um, and then, so that's what that is. So that includes reference questions, directional assistance, tours, um, anything like that. And then the next section um, is broken down into what we call checkout. So, you know, it's um, us in library land always call this circulation, um, but that's not really a, a common term. So we're calling it checkouts, but checkouts is that, but it also includes some other things. So if you are wanting to check out books and you would know that this library auto renews for you, or you could do it yourself, but the renewal counts as a checkout too. So that's that's how this stuff is added. But um, so we have some uh, the first number here, digital downloads. Um, that's both um, like eBooks and um, databases. Databases is a little, it varies. This is a detail you'd have to go into a presentation, but it can kind of vary depending on the, the vendor, right? So, but more or less, it's um, someone comes in and searches in a, in a database that'll count, or in other cases, it'll count because they opened up an article or something within that resource. It kind of just depends, but it, it's counted within that. Um, and then the e-materials for Longmont Library, this is e-books and the audiobooks checked out through Libby, more or less. There's, there's a couple other things, but it's pretty much Libby. Um, and then we put in here the 1.2 million because it's a nice number to show. But as you all know, we um, partner with what was formerly known as the Front Range, well, it still is the Front Range Digital Library, um, but it was, the, it was a consortium. We don't share anything anymore except for the digital, the ebooks and the audiobooks. So we all contribute to that, which is great because it expands what we have access to. So collectively, between Longmont, Boulder, uh, Broomfield, Louisville, Lafayette, and Loveland, that's the 1.2 million checkouts. So with our 225,000, that's what, about a quarter of it. Not quite. So we have a heavy use of yeah. ebook and Yagos, so I guess is the main point here. Um, and then coming down um, into more of the physical checkouts. So, and, uh, and by the way, if you didn't catch it, this is all 2023 numbers. This is the total year of last year. So uh, over 900 physical items checked out, 900,000, sorry. Um, holds picked up almost 70,000 holds, so there's a lot of use on that. Um, and then it's broken down into areas, so children and teen books, adult books, you can kind of see how this gets broken out. Um, the discovery passes, I think, is worth pointing out as far as people taking advantage of those museum visits and things like that that are free. 100% um, friend supported. Um, same with library of things. We're all familiar with that a little bit, but that's the you know the tools, the yard names, the devices, radon meter, whatever, car auto detect meter, <laughs> everything. Um, so this isn't the, the full list of everything we check out, but it's mm -hmm. it's the highlights we see. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, 
we issued over 5,000 new library, wow. new member, basically it's think about it as membership, yeah. Wow. Um, and then my marketing person took out the five top digital downloads, which I thought was interesting because it's, this is Libby, is what you're seeing here. So you, you basically have three magazines, a book, and then another magazine. <laughs> so it's kind of interesting to me how that worked out. Um, uh, with there you digital go. Downloads. In Longmont, people still like magazines. Uh -huh. They still read them. Yeah, yeah. So that's... Um, Physical checkouts, then we go in, into marketing. This is how we're engaging with the community via the uh, newsletter, website, and social. Mm -hmm. um, so e-newsletters, and my marketing person broke this down really well as far as how many emails we're sending and what the categories are. Um, uh, open rate is if they open the email, if you didn't know that, and then click rate is if they click within the email to somewhere. Um, and I appreciated her putting some numbers in of industry standards. You can see we have a higher click rate than is generally happens within emails. So that's a pretty good response rate. Um, uh, new subscribers for in 570 versus the total that we currently have. And this is a variety of all these new numbers, right? Um, top newsletters that were open. I know. That's, I mean, if that's indicative, right? Like, when are you open? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> In an entire newsletter. Anyway, that's that's fine. Um, they're opening it, so. Mm -hmm. um, but we do send a good variety of newsletters every month. And then website, um, the, the 300 plus thousand page views, uh, it, page views, if if you don't know how web analytics are captured, it's more of a how much time someone spends on your site versus whether they just land on it and leave. Mm -hmm. And I'm not quite sure of how that's determined um, within the statistical software that's used, but that's what that means is, is the views are more of someone is spending time on your website. Um, and then the 10 most visited pages within our site are here makes a lot of sense of what you're seeing here, the library homepage, an account I would expect there. Mm -hmm. um, and then also just to point out, out of the entire city's website, the library is the third most hit. Mm -hmm. And that is behind the city's homepage, which makes sense. The second, in case you're curious, is utilities, because people oh, want to pay their bill. Yeah. 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 Uh, so, you know, in that aspect, mm -hmm. we're the top hit. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about working with those two. Mm -hmm. um, and then events and programs. Um, how many events we uploaded to our website? Events sold out. It's sold out, of course, we don't charge, but when we do require registration, this is how many have, we're at capacity. Um, and that's pretty good. We mostly don't have reservations for programs. Um, e notifications sent through the website, that's something that you can sign up for within the website, which is separate from the e newsletters that we send out. Um, and then press releases, which we get out, and those help a lot. Um, social media, top engagements of the year, going fine free made sense if that was the top one. And then you can kind of see some others down here um, that had the, the most hit. Facebook results, um, which you see some down arrows, but you'll see down below. I mean, there's still good engagement, um, but as, and then you see Instagram, which is more engagement, so. But um, you would also expect to see some down because 2022 was still active pandemic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there was still a lot of in and out of school, a lot of people like not going out and expanding their event calendar. Right. This this is it would it's you'd have to go back to twenty nineteen to really complete. Yeah, and that's so, the thing, yeah, yeah. The whole you have yeah. the, the pre and post COVID, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Um there's that and the fact that 
the, the people keep leaving Facebook for other platforms. That's true too. Yeah. Uh, which you see at the bottom, my marketing person acknowledged, and that a goal of this year will be engage more on Instagram. Mm -hmm. As far as the other platform that we use, I realize there's other platforms, but we're not on. Mm -hmm. um, so that's in essence um, the report. Uh, Cynthia, everybody, um, of course, it, if, if you've read through it or based off what I've shown, if you have questions, I'm happy to answer these. Thanks, Dr. Scott. A uh, quick question I had right away um, was when I look at community engagement, it looks like there are 207 events, but then when I look under marketing at the events and program, there's a lot of events uploaded to the website. So what, I guess I'm confused, like what do events mean? It, it, what, what else is getting uploaded to the website under that category? Okay, hang on. So when you said community engagement, are you referring to this 207 outreach events? Yes, yeah, so I guess I guess I, I guess really the question is how are you, how are y'all and this is not a huge question this is more my curiosity but how are y'all defining events and different in outreach versus marketing? Let me go back down to Oh, I see. Oh, it's it says community engagement outside of the library is what the outreach events are. Yeah. So. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So the, the two hundred seven is only outreach as a department, not full library. Right. Okay. Yeah. So this okay. is the collective. This this ten fifty five is the two hundred and seven plus everything else. Okay. That seems like an important number to highlight um, in our report. Just the the scope, like the number. And I'm sure the scope is all other events. Overall. Yeah, and if you think of this 1055, out. like, I mean, up 1055 events uploaded to the website is every program. We upload everything to the website. Mm -hmm. So we basically mm -hmm. provided over a thousand programs in a year. Right. So the, the, the thing that keeps, and then I would love to hear from the other board members, uh, the thing that keeps coming to me from this report is our patrons are engaged. You know, there's a number of libraries in the consortium, and we're, what, one of six, but we have almost a quarter of the key materials checkouts. Um, you know, third website under utilities and city website, it's just once again, we are an essential service, um, or we, the library is an essential service in my mind. Um, so that, that really, this report brings that to me very strongly. Um, other board members, what, what do y'all think? Any questions, comments about this report? I guess also kind of smaller things, just curious. This looks really great. It's helpful to have all these numbers put together to kind of get an idea of all the work that goes on. Um, and this might be um, too soon if you haven't discussed it yet, but I like seeing kind of the social media numbers near the bottom that showed kind of the year before and then the changes to now. And so I know this is the first one, but I'm just kind of curious if moving forward, if there's been discussion on kind of where we might want to have this kind of um, information in other parts of the report as well, just to show kind of like maybe like, oh, we've served this many more patrons this year, or maybe it goes down, or just kind of like what areas were showing that change or um, having more activity up, up or down might be helpful within their report as well for future years. Yeah, so um, you're right, and what I can tell you is, um, you're right, this is kind of our first stab at this, right? So. You know, with, with the social, um, my marketing person was able to easily grab that with the other numbers. We probably could, but going forward, that is the plan. So we have been working internally here as far as capturing numbers of um, putting it 
we're entering it into one common like spread basically that Tracy created and it has a column for percent change. And what I can do with that and what I'm going to start doing going forward is probably taking out some of these numbers. I don't know if I'll make it as pretty and fancy as this report, but something that um, can show on a quarterly basis like this is where we are now in comparison to where we were at last year. And that uh, data that we're gathering will help do that. Previous to the way we're doing it, it was a little sporadic, if I'm honest. It was kind of isolated. Everyone was capturing numbers in their own way. And it was a little difficult to, to pull that together. So that's the plan, is the shorter answer. Great, thank uh, you. <laughs> no worries, that was, that was helpful. And uh, mostly just out of curiosity too, and that doesn't, um, this question doesn't necessarily have to go into this report either, but just kind of seeing these types of numbers, it made me curious about um, kind of what the Longmont website for the library that like make a suggestion page looks like, like what folks are asking for or like how many events they're um, looking for or suggesting versus folks are just, yeah, just was kind of curious what folks for the, the library were asking for online. Okay. Thanks, those are really great comments. Trevor, it looked like you were muting yourself. Maybe, maybe not, okay, never mind. Other comments or questions? Um, library getting their own Instagram account, is that up until this year? I think we have one, we're just not really engaging in it. Okay. So we, oh, I guess that says all city building. Yeah. Oh, I see, so we don't have one. I just read, I read this well the first time. <laughs> so that'll be the plan. Oh, yeah. yeah. And but I, I, will, don't know where we are. I will point out though that there's ten thousand, there's eight thousand followers in all city Instagram and ten thousand followers on just the one map for Facebook. So yeah, hopefully it won't take you long to fill up those numbers. Although I know it is frustrating, a lot of the city departments don't have their own accounts. So I'm really glad that the library finally does because not all city departments get there. The senior center would love to have their own and don't. Yeah, yeah, it's a process. So it's really yeah. nice. Yeah. So so yeah, it's a. I wonder how much of a process it is for you guys to get your own Instagram account, and if you kind of have to kind of start all over. You know, we're we're. I mean, we're lucky that we have our own marketing person. I mean, she doesn't work for me per se because she's a part of the city's communications mm -hmm. department. But I would say eighty five percent of her time is only on yes. the library and then a small percentage for city-wide activities. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I feel like we have someone that provides a good voice for yeah. us in that respect. And given the library's engagement on the website alone and just recognizing that, I think it would not be a hard argument to say that we need our own social Agreed. presence. Agreed, yeah. Agreed. yeah. Yeah, so hopefully it's not too much of a process to, yeah. to get your own Instagram. So what's some of the things that when we do present, uh, I mentioned already, the website being the third most viewed website, that really just cost me. Uh, the ebooks and audiobooks, uh, I think that one of the issues that the libraries run up against, or that all libraries do, is people don't realize how much of the activity is virtual and the support needed for that. So really making sure and pointing out the um, high number of new material checkouts, downloads, and it opens. Yeah, digital um, digital use, Cynthia, is huge as far as presenting because I think there's, and even just kind of thinking back to the election and some of the comments I saw from some citizens was feeling like, well, I come to the library, it's not busy, so why do you need more? Well, why we need more is because we have all these people that are exclusively using our services online. And just because they're online doesn't mean we need to support that better through staffing and collections. Yeah. How much time will you have to present? Do you know? No. 
I don't know much about this process. I have to check it with, with my boss, Jeff, about this to see what Susie may know. I mean, with presentations, I feel like it's a little more wiggle room. It's not like yeah. public comment where like, no, you have three no, minutes. No, you have three like, minutes. Yeah. No, there's no time. Yeah, please do. Oh, I was just going to say, I mean, I almost wonder if that deserves a little slide. I don't know if you would do anything, or at least like a big discussion, but I think that's a really valid point. And engaging with that in the discussion is really important. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
annual reports, but just comparing some of the numbers, you know, as far as patrons served or uh, events and programs to be able to compare with other municipalities our size. Mm -hmm. I mean, now, you know, it's, if it's, I mean, if it's something that you're going to have to be digging for, don't don't bother. No, I mean, there's. Through, through the state library, you can you can run you can look at anyone's library numbers. Okay. And, and in fact, I I've, I've done that, and mm -hmm. I'll even address it a little bit in this meeting when we talk about mm -hmm. our budget request coming in the next year. Because mm -hmm. a lot of what I did was point out of libraries you know, of similar size uh -huh. and how much more they're devoting to library services than we do. And my point being that we need to catch up. Yeah. So that you you can get the numbers. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Well, Public also there does, I was not able to find it in just a very quick minute, but I was looking the other day, they do list theirs pretty easily found on their website, so that would be an easy one yeah. as well. And Boulder is one of, you know, it, it's a little more realistic just because their population, it's more than Longmont, but it's closer, but then you get it. It's just the other, other neighboring towns, their mm -hmm. populations are half of Longmont. Yeah. Although some of that can be telling. Like when mm -hmm. I'm looking at what we're spending on collections and things like that, uh -huh. you know, um, within our own consortium, like Loveland, who's mm -hmm. smaller, but the amount of, of dollars they're spending yes. on collections yes. and programs is the same or more than Longmont. Yeah. Yeah. That's good too, good data point. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go too far outside the numbers. I mean, that's always tempting to read too much into reports like these. But thinking about the, as John just pointed out, the high number of staff interactions, I mean, 70,000 like reference slash information, it's, it's amazing. Um, I think that that has to speak to the word, like the friendly nature of the library staff. Um, so I think that's something to, to add as well. Um, I don't think you get that. If people are not comfortable with the approachable nature of the library staff, because I don't think you get that if, if people are not comfortable approaching the desk. Okay, other that's all I can think of for this. Other questions or comments for this report before we move on? Right. And John, if you just will let us know once you hear uh, from, your, from your boss kind of what, what the time frame looks like for presenting for this, that would be great. Yeah, I, I, I think it would be in April, as far as I can guess, but I, I'm just not sure which, which day in April. So I will follow up and then, you know, once we have a date, whoever is planning to kind of present, we can certainly talk through this in more detail and come to a plan. Okay. Great. And uh, as chair, I will be happy to if it works with my schedule, and it should. I'll prioritize this. Uh, but if not, I'll, I'll reach out uh, to Catherine's vice chair to the rest of the board members and see what the interest is. Yeah. Okay, moving on to our next library agenda. Let me get right back to my right screen. Um, we had, I, I, John and I have talked about putting this on there uh, if we wanted to consider moving the meeting a little earlier. However, I did remember that we have to set the meeting times and dates at our annual meeting. So that agenda item really is a non-starter, uh, but maybe something we could consider for the next annual meeting, which we'll get to in the next bullet point, um, if, if people would want you know, a 6.30 meeting time or, I know we all have such busy schedules, does that still make sense? Is that worth being considering? Um, okay, that brings us to uh, library board membership under new business. Um, hopefully y'all saw the email from Tracy and uh, both mine and Rihanna's term are ending in June 30th, 2024. Um, I will not be eligible for reappointment to this board. Uh, I think I'll be termed out. Um, Rihanna, you will be, it is my understanding as well. Um, so I think that's 
just of interest, I mean, if that is of interest, are you something to consider? Um, so we will definitely have at least one vacancy. And I'm wondering, Tracy or John, do you know when, or Susie, when the, um, when the new appointments will be for reporters? I can look it up. I got I'm that, looking it up. I got that email from several different people, so the city's marketing is on point, but I don't okay. remember. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> See, that was a newspaper. Oh, good. I saw it a number of places. <laughs> so the deadline is Friday, April 21st, and we will be interviewing applicants on Saturday, June 17th. So April 21st is the deadline to apply? A deadline to apply. And then they'll come to council on June 17th, and then that following Tuesday is when we make our, our decision. In between applying and June 17th, I think it, we, at least in the past, the board does our conducts our own interviews yes, and then passes yes. those on to your yeah, that's who the why candidates are a, for that meeting. So there'll be a, a, longer a time board frame. interview in between there. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not sure, I need to look back and see what happened last time, um, but I'm just assuming that those names are passed to us from the city, um, I guess you probably, Tracy, to, from the city, and then we'll set up those interviews with those candidates. Yeah, the, the city clerk will send them to Tracy and myself, right. and maybe the board, I don't know, but at least to us. Yeah, yeah. Them, and then we'll pass them on, and then the board can, can come up with um, a panel and a decision on interview dates and then whoever that is you know those names then get passed on back to the city clerk and then to city council for that interview okay right, so i'll add that to a later agenda um well wait april 17th oh, yeah there's no later agenda there's no later agenda that's our next that's our next meeting isn't it yeah okay so um, let me, I, I did pull the questions that we asked last time. Um, and I was thinking uh, a couple of things that we need to look at and then who is interested in interviewing, I, I, I will be, um, but if one or more, I think that'd be great. It's not something you need to decide right now, but once we know the dates, uh, maybe hopefully we can have at least one other volunteer for one or more of those dates. Um, and then the the questions we shared last time, I'm gonna put them in the chat. Hopefully that works. Um, uh, but I, I like these questions, sorry. My, I didn't wear my mouse today, so my I'm trying to go from one screen to the next, and my cursor is like all over the place. Um, wait, wait, this is what I have written down as our questions from last time for new board members who are interviewing. Um, I mean, there's a little word sniffing I might. Do you want to, can you share a little about the impact you believe public libraries have on the community? Uh, I maybe rephrase that. Can you share about the importance to a community yeah. rather than impact? Okay. Um, but that's a very small thing. Otherwise, I am happy to continue with these questions. Um, but John, I wanted to ask you, and I wanted to also ask the board members. I mean, from my perspective, they're perfectly good questions. Do we want the question about do you have, uh, as a library user, or interactions with the libraries to be more specific to our library? Like, is it important that this person has a relationship with our library? Or do you keep it broad? I think that's a good point. In my mind, I'm fine with keeping that broad because I, I think that people do the community. Um, 
that dates to me. I, I don't mind where that experience is coming from. Um, I think that, that if somebody does have experience with another library, you could add perhaps like the richness of conversation in these meetings. Any other questions or points or um, about that? Okay, well, let's go ahead and just um, keep those questions. Uh, if all right with everyone, and then we'll wait and get those names and, and figure out some dates. Um, I, I believe we can do that over email since it is like calendar logistical business is my understanding um, there will be nothing shared about content or, or discussion um, and I also would love to encourage all of us to share uh, this vacancy with people you think might be an appropriate fit or have a strong interest um, I, I'm I try to follow city you know listservs and so on and I did not hear about this from anywhere else which makes me think I should sign up for more lists and I'm sure there's a number of people that have not <laughs> heard about this either. Other, other, there's another piece to this agenda item that I can wait to discuss, um, but anyone else have, have comments on the, either sharing the word or the process for interviewing new board members? Okay, so here's the other piece. Um, the annual meeting is where we set the day and time, is, is the second meeting of the board after a new appointee. So I will be stepping down before that, if that makes sense. Um, so that means there needs to be a special election for the chair before before the new members come on. Um, and so I just wanted to throw that out. Uh, no need to rush to volunteer right now. Uh, but in my understanding, and I'll double check this, um, is that that will be the meeting after, like the first meeting after I'm not on the board anymore. Um, there needs to be an election. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and then the annual meeting would be depending on when the new person's appointed. It's the second. They, it's not their very first meeting. It's, it's their second meeting, and that is for other elections. Stand me. TBD. Yeah. Yeah, but the other elections of officers. I guess. I guess technically you could like elect a chair for a month. Um, I, I don't think that'd be worth it, but uh, the election of the other officers, such as the vice chair, um, the friends of the library liaison, uh, would happen at that annual meeting, the second meeting after the new member joins. Cynthia, when when um, Mark's term ended, though, and he was the chair, I, I feel like the election of you being the next chair happened before he was done. Yeah, it did, but I don't, it did. Mm -hmm. I mean, that doesn't mean we did it right. No. I just was <laughs> pointing out that we, we, it was all settled before he was off and we had new members. We can all, we can check into this. Yeah, let's check into that because that makes way more sense. It, I mean, it somebody really has does. to run an election for one thing. Yeah. So I, I think my understanding is wrong basically from hearing that because that it makes much more sense to elect somebody you know to have at least one meeting um to handle i think Tra tracy and i can look into that and then uh, I, great I, I and then maybe in in the next meeting in april we can talk about right. that and then even in may there could be an election if i'm right 
Fortnite. That would be great. Yeah. And then I would be there for the June. That's what Mark did. I would be yeah. there for the June one, but somebody else would be leaving. Okay. Thanks, John. Um, other concerns for other interpretations <laughs> than mine. Okay, great. Um, I am happy to answer any questions about uh, what the chair's responsibilities would be. Um, one thing that Mark and I did after I was elected, we did meet and and he just kind of shared his, his uh, approaches and procedures and, and, and so on. And I found that really helpful. So I would, of course, be happy to do so with whoever whoever takes this position. Um, and I'm sharing that so you don't feel like you would just be thrown in um, with, no, with no guidance. All right, well, let's move on unless there are other thoughts on this agenda item. I just have a quick question. Yeah. Aren't we already down a person? Like, we need to No, we're not, are we? It's a five person. Is it five or? I thought we. I want to think we had one spot vacant, but I. That's what I, I could. Too. Okay. I feel like we might be getting two. Exactly. Yeah, but I don't know what else. We do. Cynthia is only. We only have four members. Mm -hmm. And we have five right now. I think the question with Katie as well, I think the question is whether it's supposed to be a five or six person board. Right. So yeah. if, we're, if we're losing both Brianna and, and Cynthia at the same time, then we would have two vacancies coming up. Well, Rihanna's the... She's not term limited. No. Okay, gotcha. Rihanna can stay. It's just a matter of uh, however that works. Yeah. Cynthia can't. Yeah, she, so she's yeah. coming up on her limit. Yeah. Okay. Really? Okay. But does, Re does Rihanna have to reapply if she wants to do a second draft member? Catherine can answer that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Catherine. We can laugh about it now. <laughs> there was a little communication error with Catherine's sounds like it. And by little, I mean it was bigger than little. Anyway, um, yeah, so she has to reapply. Okay. Um, but I mean, we can look in that too. I thought it was a five person. Board. I don't know. When I looked onto the well, like one meeting where they have board vacancies and things, there's just a general application. I don't know if that's right. um, like meaning that there's a vacancy and then they need to have it filled, or if it's just so that if there needs to be an extra person. Because the last time there were board and commission, you know, the process for doing this, mm -hmm. the library wasn't in there because we had our right. full lit roster. That was my understanding too. So I feel like it's five, but. At one point we had. At one point it's. Um, that older lady whose name I can't remember. I think it might be Kathy. Yeah. Um, and no, because I'm, I'm Katie. Oh, Katie. As well. But I think. Um, Tinkerbell guy replaced Katie. Oh, that's right. Scott. Yes. Converse. Yes, he did. Scott is probably watching. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Scott. 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 Yes. Yeah. Yes, Scott did replace Katie. So I guess, Tracy, is this something that you can look out and clarify it for us? How many people? Yeah. It's a full board. Yeah, absolutely. But I don't know why the downtown Longmont website has it, and but I don't know why it would be wrong, but when they, because they have the library board meetings on the downtown Longmont calendar. And in the details, it says the library board consists of five members appointed to serve three year terms. Oh, wow. I don't know why they know that on their website, but why would it be wrong, though, too? Somebody provided that information well, they, to them. Yeah, they're pulling it from the city website. So, uh, but when I Googled it, there they came up before the city website did. But so, so somebody still gave them that information. I think, and I would have to go back and look, there was some confusion when Catherine and I first were on this board about the membership. And so I think that it might have been wrong two years ago, but is right now. Uh, it's kind of like my vague memory of this. Um, so yeah, Tracy, if you could if you could check that, that'd be great. Um, 
all likelihood, I am definitely Mr. Wolverine. No, there was there was a there was confusion over the membership a couple of years ago for sure. Remember that? Oh, there it is. Okay, it finally popped. It. I found it on the the city of Longmont code. It is five members. It's oh, okay. two dot sixty dot zero two zero. All right. Thanks. That seems pretty conclusive. Um. Okay. Other comments before we move on to old business? Great. Well, next up is just a, a budget update. And um, we have that on there because I think it's going to be uh, something that I really want to communicate our, uh, sorry, my dogs are barking, our support or the budget to council. Uh, so John, I'll just pass it to you to, to go over it right now. Okay. It's, I, by the way, I mean, I can't hear your dogs, but uh, <laughs> I can tell that you can. Okay, so um, what I thought I would do is um, kind of walk you through, because, you know, basically the way this all went down last year, you know, I, I put in, and we talked about it here at least for one meeting, of the budget request I was going to do. Um, and because of last year with the decision of I none of my budget requests that I put to the city were approved because it went to the election mm -hmm. so my intent this year is to pretty much put all the same budget requests back in with some modifications you know either to the numbers themselves and there's a couple of items I will put back in there and I can kind of talk through that so um, I, I can share again and, and kind of walk through. This is basically the um, presentation I did last year um, with the city. So, uh, yeah. okay. um, I'm going to skip through so that the, the budgeting process they have what's what's called level one and level two requests. Level one are things that you can't control, right? So think of like utility rates going up, like you have to have the budget to cover it. So you put it in there, but it's something that more or less has to be approved. And I have a few of those because of um, increasing costs, right? So we always get a percentage increase, usually to like database subscriptions and things like that. So that's how that's calculated. Those will be in there again like this, and it'll probably be a different number. Um, but those will be in. And the level one I got approved last year, but it just wasn't real significant to what yeah. I was asking for. The real meat of it is level two, and you can almost kind of think of it as this is what we would like to have, right? I mean, so um, I had requested a pretty substantial increase to staffing, staff training and professional development. Um, and um, my justification for that, again, comparing to other libraries who spend significantly more than we do, our current budget for this is only 5000 for 75 people. Um, and so that's, that's what that is. Um, I don't think I put this in the packet, but I could next time, I think, because of that way people, or I can put in some version of this, but let me, let me just get through this. So mileage. That's because of outreach. We didn't really have a mileage allowance, um, and we need to. <laughs> um, so it's not real sexy, but it's there. And actually, this one got approved um, this year. Uh, same with telephone, because we have more people with um, work cell phones. So um, uniform, I put in more. We have a very nominal amount now, but I'd like us to be presentable if we're out doing events or things and have coordinated uniforms and such, but we don't have a budget for it, so I have to basically pull it from somewhere else within our budget. Um, you think about other departments outward facing within our own division of recreation who you will never not see them in a polo shirt or a hat or something that shows where they're from and the library doesn't have that. Um, and then we get into collections. So this was my last year request to increase our adult book collections by this doesn't mean a thirty-six thousand dollar budget this means adding 36 to the existing amount of um, 
a hundred and some thousand, I think. So uh, the justification here, again, uh, th th this bottom paragraph gets into comparing this to other communities that spend substantially more than we do on collections. Uh, and this will be reflected throughout. So that's adult collections, children, same thing, right? A different amount, but the same logic. Um, and this is a lot more because we currently spend a lot less. Um, Ebooks in, in e audio, um, that's adding to the current budget of which I think is like 95,000. So we're spending about 20,000 more would put us more in the ballpark of what someone in a community this size would spend on an e content. Uh, and then same logic for children and teen, e audio, and ebooks. Programs and events. So this gets into a budget that is non existent currently in this library that almost any other public library has. We've talked about this before. Um, we are right now 100% funded by the Friends of the Library, or we don't do programs and events at this library. So, this gets into adult what would it take? So, in, again, the numbers may change, but basically, last year I was asking for 10,000. That would be a combination of supplies and then it would be ability to bring in presenters of some sort, you know, contract people, an author maybe. Um, in like a big author event, that's where the friends would come in, right? So something larger um, that our standard budget wouldn't have. But this this would absolutely be a part of our operating budget. It's as essential as collections. Um, and so same for children and teen, same logic, almost the same explanation. And again, I get into what other libraries spend on programming events. Um, and then we get into some personnel. Um, <clears throat> temp wages, you know, don't worry too much about the language there because that's city language, but it's basically our part time staff. And so they, they kind of come out of a bucket of money and need increases to personnel across the board, but temp wages is a way to, uh, I mean, it's the existing part time staff we have, but what we don't have is the ability for any of those part-time staff to work maybe extra hours because we have a need for them. Like, mm -hmm. can you come to this outreach event and help? Mm -hmm. What happens now is if they do that, they have to trade out hours for a regular shift, which then shortens the library. So the increase is both a need and in a way for us to be able to, to well, I don't want to use the word pad, but it's like a contingency. You know, so that you can afford for somebody to work a few extra hours that week because there's a need for it. Mm -hmm. um, right now, we're so on the line that no one can work an hour more than we hired them for. Mm -hmm. And that's, I just don't think that's reasonable. Um, outreach is the big ask that I had last year. It'll be the same this year. So we have Outreach Department of One, as you all know. Um, so the additional staff would be an amount of money that could hire either the part-time and or some combination of part-time and a, and a three-quarter or full-time. I know I'm going through, but I'll, I'll get this out next time so you can read through my justifications. Um, uh, a full-time library to support our, our current outreach librarian. So my current out, outreach library would become basically a division head and then have a full-time out librarian supporting that. Um, that's what that is. Um, this is the coordinator and what it would take to move the, my existing person up to a level of being a division head within the library. And then their own supplies budget, you know, um, to support that. To, to think of outreach right now as I, I refer to it as a department, just like we have adult, children, teen, and circulation and tech services. Mm -hmm. Outreach isn't considered a department right now. I'm I'm thinking of it as a department, and that's why you're seeing all these numbers. We need to make it a department, basically. Um, then we get into more collections. So new digital projects. I'm sorry, products. Um, that number would get us more in line, again, of what we should be spending on digital materials for a population of this size. And 
if, if I'm asking 100,000, you can see how far under we are, uh, which this paragraph explains. Um, some spend as much as five or 600,000 a year. We spend less than 100. Um, dues, dues and subscriptions, it's, it's kind of a combination of things, but um, so, some of it's like maintenance agreement and things like that, but some of them were new, so that's why it's under a level two of L1. That's exactly what I was wondering, why that one's not level yeah. one. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm actually trying to do this quickly. Although I indicated a one to two percent increase, so I wonder if this actually should be a one. That's something I'll probably change this year. Okay. Um, we have a computer lab coordinator that's three quarter time. Our computer lab is busy. We added teaching classes twice a month. This person is responsible for all the staffing schedules and coordinating and of these classes and coming up with the topics and scheduling staff and doing the trainings for it. So it'd be good to have that position to be a full time, which honestly doesn't cost that much in the big picture. Mm -hmm. uh, more temp wages or circulation department, same reason of it as everybody else. There's just no way for anyone to pick up an hour or two because someone is sick. Instead, we're just short staffed. Um, the storefront library I put in last year, and I, I doubt I'll put it in this year. This was sort of to go in there along with having a branch library yeah. and to kind of show what having a different type of library would look like. Um, I still want to talk through that with my boss and some others of whether I put that in, but the amount it would take to staff a storefront library of being 1.3 million, um, it, I don't want that to over, then it looks like our, I'm asking for millions of dollars in the budget. It's not realistic to do this this year. I need to get some of these core stuff done. Sure. So I, I may not put that in this year. Sure. Um, I wanted to hire a consultant to do strategic planning. I may or may not put that in this year. We have some resources here that can help with that. Um, the van I would still like to do. So our outreach mm -hmm. department has a vehicle instead of doing mileage allowance and having them do wear and tear on their own car. This was never to come out of the budget. I was going to use our Mosher fund to, to uh, support that. Um, and so that would still be my intention. So there's actually no budget impact on this other than it coming from a fund that we could spend from, which does take library board um, approval of. So I haven't brought that back here yet, but and that's it. That's the, the quick run through of the budget request. <laughs> Very quick. Thanks so much, Chad. And I'm sure we'll continue this discussion in the next two meetings. I was looking at what we had shared with council last year in terms of the board's support for the budget, as well as like, some specific items we had, we had mentioned, uh, most of which are already covered here, besides outreach uh, programming. Increase to collections. Um, one of the things that I remember being mentioned last year was uh, increased cost for materials to arrive pre process. Is that still a point? Uh, yeah, so, so that that's included, and I know I, I went through the explanations fast, but within any of the budget requests I have that are for collection increases, that's in part to not only increase our collection allowance, but to account for the pre processing charges. To, base, to get our material shelf ready when they arrive. That comes at a cost of over $4 per item. So that those numbers of collection increases is both, right? It's to account for those processing charges as well as to increase the collection budget in general that we need. Great, thanks. Other questions or comments about uh, kind of these top level budget request and I, I know it sounds like we'll receive this in a packet or another communication so we'll be able to read details later. But any other questions for right now? One thing I'll point out to you real quick Catherine before you go is that just on the pre-processing 
and I think I've said it before, but it, it, because we already embarked on that, it effectively means we have a collection um, cut this year. Because we're still paying for that, but we didn't get the increase to account for it, so we're buying less materials. Sorry to interrupt. I have more of like a sort of a strategy question and just going into this. I'm curious, you know, Susie, if you have any insight into how we might be more successful this time, if there's anything that kind of led people the wrong way, or do you think that was a way of getting these items funded last year? I mean, it's not I think a lot of thing, of course, but. Yeah. Well, and I think a lot of it was really, we were hoping that. I think we put our eggs in the basket of the, the um, bond was going to pass, or that the ballot mm -hmm. measure would pass. And so I think we were just too on the side of optimism that we didn't really plan for you know, putting that stocking money aside and really you know, funding these in the event that the ballot measures didn't pass. Yeah, I mean, I think, Catherine, that the timing of all that, I mean, when I was presenting this budget to the city manager, it was that conversation that came up that this would go into the ballot initiative, mm -hmm. not as a budget request. So effectively, council really never saw this. Yeah. Not in any meaningful way. Okay. So you don't feel like there were any, like, huge sticking points or, like, something that was just so just you know no I don't think so I, don't. I mean at least from the council perspective I don't know you know as far as well my perspective is sounds all very reasonable it is very reasonable <laughs> I well I couldn't agree more yeah. I agree could possibly cause people to not support this so <laughs> I'm trying to be strategic and sound angry yeah. Yeah. or maybe like use my anger in a strategic way Mm -hmm. I'm angry. I mean, I think with the opportunity this year, Catherine, that th this will be, there's no election that involves a library yeah. this year. This will be a budget request that comes through the city manager and then on to council. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think having these conversations and having the board an opportunity to either come to council, write to council or what, in between now and yeah. budget time and, and kind of you know, get in their radar and in their ear about the importance of this, that timing is now. Well, and I'm gonna jump into a couple of the things that I heard, and this was prior to being on the board with our last um, director, Nancy, mm -hmm. but, yeah. um, is I would hear from a couple of council people who said, well, we didn't know that the library was under budget. We didn't, nobody came to us and I'm like, well, Okay, but if <laughs> I have issues with that, but um, you know, so like you had suggested, you know, come. I think with the you know presenting the annual report is a good venue and an opportunity to insert you know what the needs are, and you know to keep a robust and um, system that you know is that is equitable, that is sustainable. And you know, we look at it as you know, in our goals and objectives, we have places and amenities. This is an amenity. So there are several components of our that the library hits as far as what our priorities are. So I think finding a way to to met, to combine those to make connect the dots for council, as well as you know, keep keep reiterating, you know, this is a need and this is. Um, you know, this is what we're asking for. And if we want to, you know, to have a robust system, this is what, you know, this, these are, this is what needs to be allocated for, for the library. Um, I hope that answers your question. Do you have to, when you meet with city manager office, do, is it, is, are they like partners in trying to help you come up with a budget to present to council or are they kind of you, the final is your, does council kind of rubber stamp what comes out of the city management office or 
you know, is, is city manager's office trying to help you prepare for city council? So, I mean, that's actually a good question for me because in my somewhat short time here, I haven't experienced a true process. Yeah. Because, mm -hmm. But um, the way I, I understand it is, you know, I work with my boss and then the assistant city manager that oversees external services, which is recreation and culture, mm -hmm. <clears throat> on a budget request. And then I have an opportunity to present that to the city manager um, the finance, uh, mm -hmm. chief financial officer, all those people and everybody else. Mm -hmm. And I believe uh, that then the city manager and others will look through that and then they will present a budget, budget packet to council. Mm -hmm. Right, so by the time this gets to council, it may be some of this or right. all of it ideally yeah. or like last year they didn't present anything like yeah, yeah. so that, that's kind of the way the process works so that, that actually leads me to another question and Kevin thanks for asking that Katie um, so we will be presenting the annual report and Susie based on what you just said it sounds like it, it would be appropriate to to share about the needs at that time um, or, or at least you mentioned um, the needs. We have communicated by email this board's support of budget items in the past. Mm -hmm. Are other boards communicating in terms of budget needs with council by different manner? I have not seen anything from but, you know Parks and Rec or Planning Department. I've had um, heard things from Public Safety, but that's those emails really came from the union, so the um, the FOP. Yeah. So it's it's a different, it's you know it's a different structure there. So um, you know they're advocating for their officers. So it was that. But I think as far as from hearing from other boards, board members, I I have not. But actually, that might be kind of a good. Um, role model because you know board stewards are professional at this yeah. and so that it might be good advice to kind of take what you've seen from the police uh, um, um, stewards uh -huh. as kind of what what the options available to us are to communicate to council So right now, we'll be communicating with council in that report. Mm -hmm. We'll be emailing council. Uh, it sounds like not yet, but maybe after the next meeting, we can discuss that. Uh, we set out communication in June last year. I'm not sure if that timing should have been earlier. I mean, last year it didn't matter, but I'm not sure in an ideal world if that timing should be earlier and in May rather than June. Um, it, are we missing anything in, in terms of strategically communicating this? Okay. Sure. Yeah, I can't think of anything. Yeah, I don't. I don't I can't think of anything different. I mean I see I see this board as very active compared to other oh, you know, I don't hear um I think it's for the museum advisory board. I think their biggest thing was they all contributed to the, um, what is it, the Friends of the Museum for their capital campaign. Right. I mean, that's, they, you know, they were pretty adamant about wanting to, to play a role in that regard. But as far as, you know, what, what the rest of council hears, it's, it's, I think this board right here is really active in the sense of vocalizing Right. Thank, thanks, Susie, for that, that context. I think that's helpful. Uh -huh. Well, I think then next, let, this will come back to the agenda um, next month, most likely. And, and maybe at that point, we can discuss as a board uh, what our recommendation to council will be and what we want to emphasize within that recommendation. Other comments or questions for this agenda item before we move on? 
Let's move on to reports. Uh, John, I'll just hand it right back to you for the director's report. Okay, um, a couple things here. I think in the interest of time, um, I won't go through the monthly highlights of programming since that was in the packet. And you're welcome to look through that and ask me questions. It's the same as I've done in the past as far as sort of pointing out some of the events we did this last month and the impact we've had. Um, but what I will um, address here are a couple things. One is um, we have planned um, our annual all staff in service day which is going to be May 17th on a Friday. We do this every year, or at least the last three years. I can't say before that. Um, <laughs> and so I have um, arranged um, with a couple of presenters to come in and um, do a one session on uh, what we call trauma-informed care, for, uh, which some of you may be familiar with that. And so, um, it'll be a session on that, on uh, working with the public, each other, and a little bit of self-care. Kind of a theme this year is a little bit of self-care, and I'm, I'm concerned this year about staff morale, so I want to have a day that kind of focuses on, you know, yes, how do we still take care of the public, but that, how do we manage ourselves in doing so? Um, so that's a big theme in that presentation. The other um, presenter I want to bring in, um, will be more on the EDI realm, or DEI realm, however you like to say it, and um, that one will really focus on allyship and um, supporting each other through experiences that staff can face and have faced, such as microaggressions and blatant racism or other things, um, either from the public and hopefully not from each other, but we still need to have a better sense of this to support each other. So big, two big themes there. Um, one of the reasons I wanted to bring this up to the board here is my hope for these presenters is um, to pay for their presenter fees through our Mosher Fund um, because they I don't have the budget for it in my standard budget. Um, and I think it would be appropriate the Mosher Fund outline of how we can spend that is very broad. It's just basically for any library purposes. So there's really there's really no rules about it as far as a fund and how they're structured. Sometimes they can be very specific on what you can spend it on. Um, so I actually have two things there. One is very specific to staff day. The other is I want to um, use some Mosher funds to help support our summer reading program. Um, this would largely be in the support of getting back into the, the temp wages category. So right now, um, we don't have enough hours to support the summer reading program we do. Mm -hmm. I had hoped that minimally I would have gotten the temp hours I needed within children's to support summer reading, and I didn't, obviously. Um, it wouldn't take that much. It would maybe be about, I think, I say not that much, but when you think about multiple staff and for three months, I'm looking at to pull out about 20000 from the Mosher Fund and then another... Um, 6,000 for the presenter fees for staff day. Um, for So for summer reading, that allows some of these part-time workers to work extra hours during the summer and really support that program at the level with that we would like to support it. Um, and then the presenter fees are what they are, which I explained. Um, because it's the motion fund, um, I can spend from that, but it, it, it does need um, a board uh, motion that, that says, for what I've explained, the board agrees that would approve uh, me pulling from that fund for these things. Great, right, thanks so much, John. Well, it sounds like there is a vote motion that the board needs to make. Um, I am happy to make that motion. I'm very much in support of both of those items. So um, I move that the board uh, Permits use of the Mosher funds for staffing to help support summer, the 2024 summer reading program and for presentation fees for staff development during an annual in service day. And Tracy, I'm happy to support that. Kevin, is that a second? Or a, oh, wait, and, and we do have a second. Um, and 
this point we could also discuss it, as well um, in my understandings through rules of order. So I'll, uh, the motion is made and seconded and I'll open the floor for any discussion. Okay, thanks, Rihanna. Katie, any comments? Uh, no, okay. there's no response. <laughs> no. <laughs> thanks, it's very figured. Um, well, then, at this point, let's let's go ahead and move to a vote. All in favor? Aye. And I, can, oh, I see three hands, and so I'm assuming. Oh, uh, yeah. So, yeah. Katie, I'm, yeah, I'm, not showing, I'm not showing up on it right now. It's not oh. connecting with me to camera, but that was an eye. Oh, there we go. Hi. Right. <laughs> okay. So the motion passes unanimously. And, and John, you have the board's support for use of those funds. Tracy, do you need me to repeat any of that? No, we're good. I got it. Great. You're, you're awesome. Yeah. Great. Um, okay. Yeah, thank you. Back. No, that'll go certainly help us a lot with these uh, couple of initiatives. Um, what is that word, Mosher? So, oh, it's the name of the person um, or people, the family. Okay. Mosher is their, is their name. Yes. Yeah, it's something that I wasn't aware of when I first started. I found it out by accident. Oh. Okay. Someone asked, said something about the Mosher Fund. I'm like, wait, what, what is that? That sounds like money I have. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> <laughs> so basically, yes, this family um, committed a certain amount to the, only the library, and we can spend only on the interest accrued in this particular setup. However, since no one has been spending on it, there's a sizable amount there, which makes it a little bit easier to, to pull from it for these things and not feel like I'm going to deplete it. Right. So even what I'm asking for is, is a fraction of what's there. Nice. Um, yeah, good question. I just say Mosher. Like, I did. You I all mean, know. I, know. I, I did. I didn't care. Obviously, like, that seemed like a minute detail to whether or not it was a yes or no for me. But like, just curious. No, um, and, and just to jump in, I'll tell you too. A couple of years ago, the board, Captain Mark, remember more details. Uh, kind of revamped and set procedures uh, for approval of use of those funds, which is. Um, so that 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 is also kind of a newer process as well. Nice. Um, okay, and then the last thing I have in my uh, director update, I wanted to update the board on some work that a committee within the library and I are, have been working on to revise our re request for reconsideration. Mm -hmm. Uh, also known as challenges to the collection or programs or displays or exhibits. Mm -hmm. And I've wanted to revise this par partially because it's outdated and also in part because, and I think I might have mentioned this the last meeting, but the state was working on a, uh, our, our legislatures were working on legislation mm -hmm. to basically have a ban on book bans. Well, that, that's been died. That died in okay. committee. Uh, it, it's, it may resurface in a different form with different sponsors at some point. Um, but some of it made sense, and, and, and the parts that made sense are what's informed some revisions that I want to make here that I just want to share here in case there's any questions or concerns, um, which I would like to walk through uh, with you here uh, as quick as John can do that. Um, So if you've seen our request for reconsideration form, um, some of this will look familiar, mostly the form part. So this is all we have available right now. And this is not on the website, nor would it be. I'd like to keep it where people have to come in and get it. Mm -hmm. But we've been talking about this, so we've re revised some parts of the form itself that someone fills out. Um, the important things to point out are you will notice in the form that you don't def say what city you're from because it's assumed you're in Longmont, and if not, then you don't get to fill out this form. Um, the other part is a library card number. This is new. What I, should, what I should say is this would be new. We haven't implemented this yet. Um, 
So staff agree uh, between residency and the fact that if you're a library user, you should have a full access library card. Uh, and then you have the right to challenge or fill out a reconsideration form of something that you object to. Many libraries do it this way. Mm -hmm. So I'm not inventing something okay. there. Um, it, and it kind of, it helps eliminate groups and others from outside. This is what happens in a lot of other places around this country where people flood the system because they just file challenges because there's no policy in place to prevent it. Um, so there's really no need for that. It's kind of setting ourselves up for something that is unlikely here, uh, but I want to make sure we have it in place. Is NIWAT part of the Walnut Library tax area? No. Okay. No. Yeah. Yeah, our service area, as we call it in library land, is the city of Guam. Um, and then a minor revision, I say minor, we used to just ask what they were requesting and let them free text it, but now we have options, so you can choose one of what you're challenging, um, if that's the case. Um, and then all the other questions are the same, I think, that we ask now. Um, a little statement at the bottom, um, we've revised a little bit um, that it will be reviewed by myself and as needed professional staff, and I, uh, this used to say that it will go to a, a committee, committee yeah. um, and sometimes that will be warranted and sometimes it won't. Um, you know, so I, I didn't want to have it there that we formally have a committee and that someone wants to see minutes from such a committee mm -hmm. um, because I don't always need a committee. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's it's very clear to me what the response is. So I usually confer with staff, but that might be more informal, mm -hmm. particularly if someone is the selector for that area of the library that something is being um, asked to be considered. Um, that's one change there. Um, otherwise, I think uh, the rest is the same. So if they're if they're challenging a program or a display or a collection, the program isn't canceled. The display stays up, and our item stays on the shelf until this is resolved. That's always been the case. By the way, um, <clears throat> um, I share these with the library advisory board. I think when I was new here, I didn't do that. I shared with you after the fact, but um, mm -hmm. I'll make sure I do that going forward before I. Uh, respond officially to a, 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 per, a patron that may do this um, and then my decision is final and you will hear within a month so that's the form um, and then all of this up here is new and so we never had any explanation of request for reconsideration we have a collection development policy which kind of outlines a little bit of this and how we go about it our philosophy we have a display of program policy which explains that so people know how we come up with displays or programs and how to comment on that. So I've added, um, we as a, as a committee here in the library have a lot of uh, information here as far as how does this come about. So what do we do here? This is kind of a summary of our collection development policy and display. It explains some things as far as Things that are obviously critical to us, right? First Amendment, freedom to read, um, free access to library materials for minors, intellectual freedom, all these things that inform how we operate as a public library. So people have the opportunity to hopefully look at that before they might reconsider to understand where we're coming from. That would be the ideal situation. Um, Will that be on the website? That document? This document will be on the website. Okay, but then the form and then it will say at the end if you still want a form, come into the library. Okay. Yeah, no, I do want this on the website. Because mm -hmm. um, yeah, I was looking at the, the links. And yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, so the some other um, items in here. So uh, just because we have it in our collection or it's a program doesn't mean that you know you don't want. It represents our viewpoint of something, which is which is true. Um, we have a statement in here about a public library not being legally responsible for children while in the library, which is really important for us. I think a lot of times we get complaints as people feel like, you know, we weren't protecting their child. Well, that's also not our role. Mm -hmm. That's the role of the parent 
uh, and our guardian or whoever is in charge of that that child in the library. That's always been the case of a public library. Um, and let's see, we get down. Did I put this in the packet, by the way? Yes, yes it's just yes. a slightly different form. I I just oh, it. you're right, because my it's marketing different. person formatted the form. <laughs> formatted that. Yeah, but the, this part up here is the same. Mm -hmm. okay. So that, yeah. so, okay, so you might have had a chance to look at it or not, but mm -hmm. at least you have it, and we can always follow up on this if you, after this meeting, if that's warranted. Um, and then after all that, it basically says, okay, now that you know all this, if you still want to file a request here, and here's some other things to consider, you have to get the form from here. Only, um, it won't be removed or canceled just because it's under review. Um, and then the, the statement, which it would, which would be new, that you have to have a full access card and be a, a the way we phrase it is um, living within the Longmont Public Library tax payment service. Mm -hmm. So that would not include that um, another neighboring. Um, and then some of these are new and some of these I think are good and a lot of libraries do and also this was a little bit informed by some of the legislation that might have gone through uh, in part, right? So um, you can only have one request for consideration active at any given time. So we can't get people putting in, one person putting in for multiple things at a time. Um, and an individual or group can only put in two per year. After that, you have to wait. Um, <clears throat> once it's um, upon resolution, either the item, the display, exhibit, or program um, cannot be challenged again for three years. So we've, we've instituted the statute of limitations in some way. Um, how did I come up with three years? Because that's what a lot, a lot of other libraries do. <laughs> yeah. So in case you're going to ask that question. Um, you have to fill it out completely, so if it's anonymous or incomplete, we just basically won't review the form. And you have to do a separate one for each either material display. That's why we list it out these separately, so that you can't check them all and put yeah. in one request. So that's me talking through that, but um, you know, outside of uh, this advisory board having any comments or concerns about it, my next step would be Probably, I have to look this over. It's not necessarily an official policy, so I don't know if I need to send this to city attorney's office for review or not. It kind of gets into some legal language, so I might just do that to make sure I'm checking all my, you know. Recommended. Yeah, send it again. Back. I guess you can turn it off for too, but um, I don't have any idea how this works. Yeah, we talked about a lot about that as the committee. Uh, basically, the committee I'm referring to is all these selectors in the library, so professional librarian staff and myself that have responsible for the responsibility for the collection. And we we actually had some good discussion about that. You know, it's like, well, just because you don't have a library card, but if you live in the city, you're still a taxpaying resident, and therefore you're contributing to the library on some level. So should we restrict that? You know, at the end, the consensus was basically it, it made more sense to do that. Well, I agree with everything you have here. Okay. <laughs> I just want to make sure that if somebody challenges your authority to set these rules, you 100% have the city attorney's office behind you. It, that's a very good point. And I, I think that will be my next step is to send this on to the city attorney that way and it is reviewed and basically stamped in that way yeah yeah i agree do we know like from the city's relationship to you and your role like 
this is within the parameters of your job description. Because I only ask this because I'm researching you know, all this stuff for this paper right now, and there's all these crazy city councils and other places that are like basically replacing the library director with some kind of a puppet <laughs> director who will like do their bidding, you know. Mm -hmm. So I just want to make sure like fun. nobody yeah. who is that kind of um, minded person might like, try to undermine my authority. Yeah, I appreciate that. And I think in, in some of the places where that kind of activity happens, in large part, um, it's with different governing bodies. So they have board of trustees or a decision making board. And so that's where it can get muddy. And then they're making the decision over the director or over library staff. In the case here with an advisory board, it's, it's obviously, it's not set up that way. So, um, but, but it's a good point. I mean, okay, so outside of that, who sets it? Well, I am as the director, but you're right with the city legal review and approval, I, I want to make sure it, it makes sense. I, I think you should have that authority. You're the trained people who know how to do this, but. Yeah, I yeah. humbly agree. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I could follow up with like the older house meeting to see if you to touch on it. Yeah, I would appreciate that, you know, if, if, if you want, since you have it, I, I would appreciate any feedback. It's, I haven't moved anything forward except for getting this draft completed for this meeting. Thanks for sharing, John. I, I think the goal seems to be the types of interactions that you described at the beginning of the meeting, um, you know, a, a dialogue of respect, um, yep. even if ultimately the sites, you know, there's still disagreement. And in my mind, this, this, this hits that. Um, where people still have the right to request reconsideration, but I think it makes a lot of sense that as the taxpayers supporting the library, that it, those requests should come from uh, that body of people. Um, so I, I don't have any comments except the support. Um, thanks for that question, Catherine. I think that's a really valuable one as well. Any other comments or questions on this? And of course, the flip side is people can also request materials for consideration as well to add to the collection. Um, so yeah, it seems to yeah. here nicely. Great. Thanks so much, John. Uh, anything else on your director's report? Uh, no, that's, that's all I have. Okay. Well, with Jamie out, we'll skip the principal library liaison, um, catch up with that next month, and we'll, we'll move to our city council member liaison. Uh, well, sorry, it's late. I've been losing it. So many lots today. We'll move to the these report, is what I meant to say. Um, I know I had to go back. So council was canceled last Tuesday because uh, we were at the National League of Cities in Washington, oh. and it was it was great. It was phenomenal. I, I felt like the theme, you know, the overarching theme in all of the sessions that I attended was around um, apprenticeship and building workforce. So what kind, you know, so one of the, the sessions I went to really talked about, you know, collaborating with your school district or with private um, industry on building those internships and, um, you know, the workforce for the 21st century you know, as we're moving towards EVs, um, you know, renewable energy, there's new types of technology and skills that need to be mm -hmm. um, learned because um, the new types of jobs that will be coming out in the, in the near future. Um, additionally, and it was interesting because this is something I hear from residents around you know we're losing a lot of trade plumbers um electricians. electricians you know different people that work with their hands and um welding i think the mm -hmm. auto mechanic and so it seems like and this is not just in our district or in our area but really nationwide there's this big push to get 
all the kids in the four-year universities and, and going down this, this path where we're kind of leaving behind a lot of those um, important mechanical and trade skills. So how, how can we, we build that back up? And you know, there's all, and then in having conversations with the Department of Labor, there's a lot of opportunities for grants. And so, you know, and even another one, I'm going to kind of change course here. So I attended a session on after school and summer learning, and this one was really cool in the sense that you know, so there's like they have AmeriCorps, uh, there's different um, agencies. That, that special, you know, that focus on programming and for youth. And there's a, also a lot of federal dollar that we could tap into when we coordinate, you know, maybe we work with the school district or we, you know, we work with, you know, like for in this case, the library, you know, like different departments within our, our city. And, you know, depending on how we, word our grant or who we bring to the table to collaborate with, we can raise our opportunities to, to acquire funding for this. Um, so yeah, I picked up all, you know, their numbers and I'll, you know, I wanted to do a little bit of homework on that to see what, what opportunities would be there. Um, with the city we wanted to kind of, and especially now with microtransit, I'm gonna go off the other, we have approved the, um, had received uh, money for microtransit. So really it's just the smaller buses, you know, like using Via. And, and it would operate, they're still working out the logistics of it, but it would operate kind of like a, an Uber, where they wouldn't go right to your house, but you'd go to a pickup area, call, and then within 15 minutes or so, they'll, they'll come pick you up. Um, that's a great opportunity too, if we have this, Available for middle schoolers, you know, maybe who don't have access, you know, to get to some of our youth programs or, or programs at the library or museum, that we can actually have this type of transportation to get them from school to these places. You know, so it's just kind of throwing ideas out. We got all, I, I know Councilmember Yarborough and Councilmember McCoy and I all went. We were just like throwing ideas off of each other. There's all these neat, neat things that we could that we could do if we we pursue. Um, yeah, so that's you know that was that that piece. Um, I'm trying to think when I was going back to the last council meeting. You know, I did look and see the sustainable sustainability and climate action action committee did come up and do their annual report. So it's not unheard of for the library to come up and do. We have a sustainable sustainability advisory board, yeah. so they came up and presented. So it's not unusual that, that y'all are doing this. So um, yeah, I saw that. Um, I'm trying to think what else um, we are uh, getting EV stations. So we recently passed um, one of our ordinances that would get the ball rolling on having um, city um, EV stations. Yes, and so we're kind of moving moving the needle on that one for um, renewable and electric vehicle opportunities. Cool. Yeah. Great, well thank you so much for, mm -hmm. for that. We always appreciate that added context. Uh, any questions or comments for, for any of the uh, reports so far? Okay, hey, well, I don't have anything for library profession news. We did just learn that that uh, bill was killed in committee, but um, I don't know if anyone else has anything they want to share about the greater world of library and culture right now. Not library, hey, I, not library, but I forgot to mention we were on the, I rode the train. With yeah, Del, the governor, did. Yeah. Did the I, was, I was one of the ones on the train yeah, did. from Denver Union Station to um, here. here to Longmont. Yeah. yeah, so as part of that uh, front range passenger rail, a bill will be coming forward to the state to approve uh, moving forward in funding 
So right. it very much could be in our near future. Right. How can I forget that? It's <laughs> being late. Yeah, I know. That would be amazing. Mm -hmm. And we can ask okay, moving on. Any other comments? Uh, library board comments. Any other comments from library board members? Okay. Well, our next meeting will be April fifteenth, and I, I will adjourn us at eight fifty-two.